Hello, friends, and welcome back to another episode of the Holistic Navigator podcast, where we believe in the body's ability to heal itself. I'm Brian Strickland, the producer of the show, and today we have a very special episode. Ed had the opportunity to sit down with somebody he has respected and followed for many years and is one of the best known names in holistic health, Dr. Joseph Mercola. We're not sticking to one topic on this episode because we wanted to get the most out of our time with our honored guest. We're asking Dr. Mercola his opinion on some of our favorite health topics and some exciting new offerings that he has on the horizon. And just a quick reminder, if you enjoyed this episode or any of our previous episodes, please do us a huge favor and leave us some feedback and subscribe. It not only helps us spread the word about the podcast, but we hope we really have an impact on some people's lives. So that's it for me, but sit back and enjoy this conversation with Dr. Joseph Mercola. Today, I am so freaking excited. I don't know if I've ever had any moment of, of, of anticipation that I have on this podcast because we are talking to Dr. Joseph Mercola. Hello, Dr. Mercola. Hi, Ed. Glad to be with you today. Man, you don't know what the word glad means. It's on this side with uh, fireworks going off. Before I want you to say anything, I'm going to have to give a couple minute uh, kind of history. I, uh, um, as some, many of my listeners know, I've been involved in deeply in the pursuit of following my personal belief that the human body has such a powerful, innate, God-given uh, ability to heal and stay healthy, but only if we give it what it needs nutritionally and take away what's harming it. And somewhere um, when the internet really got rolling, I remember so well, Dr. McCullough, it was probably about 1998, and uh, you had started writing uh, uh, just this wonderful, clear-headed uh, type of nutritional and holistic and, and functional medicine type of advice to help people raise their level of health. And I remember one of your uh, uh, writings, you were speaking about using omega-3 and how important it was. And it was so early in your writings, and I'm not by any means uh, saying that it was uh, a bad mistake because we all learn as we go. But I remember you saying, I want you to go to Costco and buy the omega-3 oils, uh, fish oils. And I went to Costco that I remember, next I remember that. Do you? I remember that. And yeah, I, I, I sent you an email and I said, man, my friend, I so respect you, but can you please look into that? Because at that time, Costco was not the, the place to go buy omega-3s. You sent me an email back and said, thank you, Ed, for uh, telling me that. And I'm going to change the way that I'm advising people to buy omega-3s. Never have I forgotten that because... You just you 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 always speak from the point of ethics and wisdom and accuracy. And I, before I go uh, any further into any other subject, I want my listeners to know what I tell people. And I probably talk to fifty people a week. Maybe I counsel them, educate them. And when I sense that a person needs to be uh, educating themselves on any freaking topic of health, this is what I say. I say. Uh, I want you to go to the internet. You you do have the internet, don't you? Because, you know, some people still don't. And uh -huh. I'll say yes. And I'll say, I don't want you to go to traditional sites. Please don't just Google uh, AFib or vitamin D or any of the topics we talk about. I said, the, the, the wisest person living today that speaks on health is Dr. Mercola. And I said, don't go to any other site because this man has got the most uh, clear vision. He's not bought off by anybody, no company. He speaks from his heart. So again, welcome to the Holistic Navigator, my friend, Dr. McCullough. Well, thank you for those kind words. Thanks. And uh, yeah, it's been, uh, you know, normally you could have just typed in anything on Google and, and our site was, would have come up within the top two, two or three, but there's this uh, a campaign by by Google with all the big internet companies, Google and Facebook mm -hmm. are being the primary ones, which have essentially are excluding us from the population uh, because they don't like what we're saying. They don't like people to hear the truth about health and they uh, tagged us as fake news. If you can believe it. <laughs> uh, I know it is. It's hugely um, 
concerning to me, and I know it is to you and many of the people who are free thinkers in this country. And, you know, before I came on today, and I don't want to keep rambling on myself because I'm here to have you here, but I know you remember this lady. In 1970, her book was my Bible. Now, it wasn't all correct because, again, she was in the 70s. Adele Davis. Adele Davis, I was going to say. Yeah, I read her books, too. Yep. And the book Let's Get Well was was where I just, like, I knew that I was going to spend my whole life with this. But a, a quote of hers came up today that I had never realized. And I thought of you when I wrote this down. But this was Adele Davis in 1965. If America is to survive, the best fed nation myth had better be recognized for what it is propaganda to produce wealth and not health boy that was good you know again the holistic navigators last podcast was on keto i want to get down to the nitty gritty here and you know i have really embraced a, a keto lifestyle myself because partially your teachings have convinced me that uh we need to be protecting the mitochondrial function. I'm not going to get into that, but one of the books you recommended and you interviewed the guy, I think, was Tripping Over the Truth by Travis Griff- Christopherson. Oh, yeah, I did. He's a, he's a friend, and we're actually working on some collaborative projects because uh, we share mutual interest in life extension. So Wow. I, I just love I've recommended his book, and I've read it about three times. However, I'm, the thing I want to say is, you know, keto, and this conversation is not to teach people that. They can go back to my podcast or they can look toward your new book, which is coming out called Keto Fast. Is that mm-hmm. And when will it be out? It'll be out April 30th. So it's really soon. And uh, it clears up a lot of the confusion because there's keto means so many different things to so many people, different mm-hmm. people. It's, you know, there's not a consensus to what it is. And there's confusion between that and, and paleo and calorie restriction and cyclical keto. So there's a lot of, a lot of misinformation out there. And so what will this book do as far as is, you're going to distill it down to, to uh, uh, choices or is this like the game plan? No, this is a follow up from my first book, Fat for Fuel, mm-hmm. which teaches people how to do keto. And it should be cyclical. You shouldn't to do straight keto, which is essentially a low carb diet. You are some people can do well on it continuously for months and months and maybe even years. But most people once they're able to become metabolically flexible and burn fat for fuel, need to essentially uh, cycle in some carbohydrates and, and uh, go off of the keto. So you have to go in and out, in and out. And that's what I describe in Fat for Fuel, foundational book. But and once you are that way, then what I learned is one of the most powerful metabolic interventions you can do is fasting. Historically, we've done it for for time memorial. I mean, it's a part of every major religion in the world and has been for many, many centuries. So it wouldn't persist for so long if there wasn't some value aside from a spiritual perspective. There's a, there's an enormous physical benefit. And the challenge I found, though, because I was going to write this book, Keto Fast, to help people understand how to do water fasting. But there's two primary problems. One is compliance. Virtually everyone listening to this will not be highly or will not highly embrace the concept of not eating for anything for five days and just drinking water. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the compliance will be really low. But more importantly, in the 21st century, most of the toxins we're exposed to, and there's 80,000, more than 80,000 industrial produced toxins that that uh, are, are fat soluble. And as a result, they uh, once they're in, inside your body, they are stored in your fat cells. So once you start doing water fasting, it, uh, there's a high likelihood uh, that these will leach out and your body won't be able to properly process them. And as a result, you'll cause some damage. So this book, Keto Fasting, goes over a hybrid method that t- teaches you how to get even more benefits from five day than five day water fasting uh, and do it safely with, by helping you to eliminate the toxins that you're exposed to. So it's it's an advanced form after fat for fuel because you can't there's a number of people can't do it. So if you are not metabolically flexible, in other words, mm-hmm. if you can't burn fat for fuel, if you're not, do not have the ability to burn, to create ketones, which is, and ketones are, what is a ketone? It's a, it's a water soluble fat. It's four carbons or, or three or two made by your liver. And it's easily transported. It goes through almost every cell membrane in your body and can really nourish your brain. But most people can't make them. 80 to 85% of the people in this country are, are insulin resistant. And when you're insulin resistant, you can't, do keto. 
So that's why you do fat for fuel first. And once you graduate, then you can do keto fast. Uh, but even if you're metabolically flexible, if you're underweight, if you're uh, pregnant, if you're breastfeeding or have an eating disorder, then not eating food for uh, you know, a short time is not a good strategy because you'll lose too much weight or you know, can contribute to the other disorders. Because when you're pregnant, of course, it's a, an, an anabolic state where you're seeking to build up muscle tissue and you don't want to be breaking down tissue. No. So, the, so what are the benefits of doing partial fa- or fasting or partial fasting or fasting mimicking diet is that three primary things is because as we age, there's a d- tendency towards degeneration and getting degenerative diseases like arthritis, cancer, heart disease, obesity, diabetes. Uh, so w- one of the strategies that prevents that is a process called autophagy, which comes from two Greek words meaning self-eating. And it's a process that your body has designed over many, many generations to identify damaged and defective cellular parts, tag them, and break them down to their constituent elements so they can be recycled and remade into new and improved parts uh, that is facilitated by the second benefit that comes from fasting, uh, which is activation of your stem cells. So those are two powerful reasons why you want to consider this strategy to improve your health, because it really is going to make a big, big difference. That is, that is, you know, you are talking something that I was averse to for the most of my 61 years, which was fasting. And you mm-hmm. convinced me with, uh, with your logic and your wisdom, uh, because I read your website every single day that I have to do intermittent fasting. And I will yes. tell you, my fear was that I'm not going to sleep well because I've always had a snack at eight o'clock at night and that I have a fast metabolism and that I would lose muscle and weight. Neither of those things happen. In fact, my weight has become more stable and my gut is happier than it has been in decades. So thank you, Dr. McCuller, for that well, part. And, and let me help you understand that because you're right. That is probably one of the, if there's any principle in the book, that's probably one of the most important ones, the simplest and one of the biggest take home messages I give in any, any presentation I give is to compress your eating window. We sleep for eight hours, right? Mm-hmm. We should eat for eight hours. You should not eat for 16 hours. And here's what the the magic benefit that occurs if you don't eat for at least three, preferably four, even five, or even six hours before you go to bed. There is a coenzyme in your body called NADPH. Now, many people listening to this probably haven't heard of it. I suspect you haven't either. No, I haven't. But it's, yeah. Oh, you have? Okay, good. Then, it, then, then if you have, you know it's the battery of your cell. It's the, the storage of reductive potential. And the be- one of the primary benefits is that it recharges your antioxidants. In other words, we have exposure to these free radicals. They increase uh, oxidative damage to your cellular parts, like your DNA, your cell membranes, your protein, your stem cells, your mitochondria. So one of the ways you do this is by your own internal antioxidants, not swallowing vitamin C or vitamin E, but just recharging the ones you already have, like, like uh, glutathione. So when the biggest consumption consumer of NADPH is making fat. So when you eat before you go to bed, here's the, here's a take home point. You, you can't use those calories. So your body has to do something where it doesn't keep them in suspended animation in your intestine. No, it does. It, it absorbs them and it's and it digests them and it metabolizes and stores them as fats. The only way you can store them as a fat is has to create a fatty acid. And that Ed is the single biggest consumer of NADPH. So you are what you are doing when you eat before you go to bed is you are sucking down your NADPH levels and radically reducing your body's ability to reduce oxidative stress stress while you sleep. And one of the most important times of the entire 24 hour day is your repair and regeneration window. So you're just self-sabotaging with you if you eat, you know, more uh, less than three hours before you go to bed. Wow, that is what a wonderful explanation, and I was, certainly was not aware of the exact biochemistry of how it was working. Based, well, you on know what? Eating. You know why? Why? Because I figured it. I just figured this out a few weeks ago. Oh. I didn't read about it, or no one. No, it's not in any book. I just, uh-huh. you know, I, stu- I one of my passions is studying molecular biology, and mm-hmm. once I understood those mechanisms, it was so obvious as to the reason. Because there's virtually no one who will disagree with not eating before you go to bed. I mean, that's a standard truism. It's non-controversial, but no one says why. And that's the reason why. That's one of the reasons. There's probably others, but that's one of the big ones. Put your gut to rest too. You know, your digestion system doesn't need to be working when you're sleeping. Yeah, it'd be like working out for 
12, 14 yeah. hours a day, just as it makes sense. The uh, So last question on keto, people who have elevating cholesterol from keto, is that a true concern or what should they be thinking about? No, they should be thinking about uh, a different strategy to get their information about health. I would recommend <laughs> reviewing Malcolm Kendrick's uh, books. He's written two now, uh, The Cholesterol Con and a book about statins. And I've, I've got an upcoming interview with him, but he's a an MD family physician like myself. He's based in the UK and really a brilliant mind on this topic. It's one of his passions and helps people understand that, the, the, you know, your cholesterol level is almost absolutely nothing to do with your risk for heart disease. It's a fallacy. It's a myth. There's it, it, it's just associated with other variables, you know, like the uh, the cholesterol happens to be in the plaque, but it's there for different reasons because of plasminogen and clotting dysfunctions. So, uh, you know, the, the, there's just no reason to be going on statin drugs. So I would not be concerned about cholesterol levels, nor most people will improve them with time. Uh, you, you do want to be concerned if your triglycerides are high, but that's so easy and almost invariably reduced once you go on a low carb diet because high carbs and insulin resistance are one of the primary drivers of high triglycerides. Wow. Yeah. Amen to that. And I know that you speak of this and I do every day is that, you know, getting the uh, fasting insulin test is far more important than any cholesterol numbers that you could think. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. uh, Yeah. And even better would be an oral glucose tolerance test where you take a 75 gram glucose challenge and then sequentially measure your insulin levels over four hours and see what happens. And there's a book by a call about diabetics or diabetes something, but by Joseph Kraft, K-R-A-F-T, who since passed, but he's really has brilliantly analyzed that process. And that's probably the most sensitive test for insulin, insulin resistance. Mm, I love that. Uh, because, you know, and I did a podcast on what kind of blood tests we really need to get to determine or to help ourselves to be healthy. Because mm-hmm. I tell people all the time, and I, I don't, I, I kind of maybe hear what you say about this. I say, you go to your mainstream medical model people, and their main purpose is to diagnose a disease, none of mm-hmm. which is to help you to have prevention, knowledge, a game plan to stay healthy. None of that's going to be part of what you're going to get at your insurance paid mainstream people. And so you have to learn on your own. You have to partner with people like yourself and your web, your com website in order to be Uh, enlightened, or if not, you're going to get run over by the same truck that everybody else is, which is big pharma and all the excessive prescriptions and lack of knowledge of even how to think about health. So, yeah, and it's not that it's not that the doctors are stupid. They they just were never taught this. And the the framework with which in the are required to function does not enable them to spend the time that they need to address your underlying health issue. They are limited to like five to 15 minutes at most, unless they're an independent. Mm-hmm. And, you know, most doctors are not. And they've got debts to pay. So they they are handcuffed. They cannot help you. It's almost physically impossible in that type of structure. You have to spend hours and hours in being individually coached and, and mentored uh, to, to, to learn to change the, the crucial and vital lifestyle skills that's required to, to, to impact these metabolic pathways. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. And, you know, I... I have people, uh, healthcare physicians and nurses and nurse practitioners ask me constantly about MTHFR. And I'm like, yeah. I'm thinking, you weren't taught that in school. But then I tell myself, well, I know you weren't taught that. It was not in your toolbox and it's not your fault. The system's broke that you were part of and you are good people. It's just you're in part of a bad system. So uh, right. second thing I want to move on to real quick is I am huge believer in the integrity of the gut in order to, to yeah, uh, make absolutely. it optimally healthy or else the body will not be optimally healthy. And the term leaky gut is certainly getting more and more popular. And, you know, it's not easy. It's not super easy to uh, explain to people, kind of, but it's certainly more difficult to create kind of a game plan. What advice do you give people who are are familiar with leaky gut, understand that the fact that it's going to compromise their immune system, that it's involved in autoimmune, probably it's involved with many diseases, and until those basic holes are fixed, they're not going to get optimally healthy. What is what would you give them as far as, far as bullet points or other advice? Well, there's two primary issues for leaky gut. Uh, well, one is you have to optimize your micro gut microflora, but one of the, the two two primary variables that contribute to openings and penetrations in the the integrity of the, the membranes would be. Um, 
glyphosate or Roundup uh, and essentially almost any non-organic food is contaminated with it. And that has clearly been shown to de, you know, cause holes in, these, in, the, in the epithelium of your gut lining. And then the other one would be uh, lectins. And Dr. Stephen Gundry has, has popularized this and he book, wrote the book, The Plant Paradox. But, you know, sub, in, supposedly healthy foods like these organic vegetables uh, and, and healthy grains even uh, and, and potentially, you know, even foods like dairy, even raw dairy um, and grass fed could be problematic for many people. And they punch holes in there and and allow these antigens or uh, not completely digested protein molecules, molecules can come in and, and stimulate an autoimmune re reaction, but uh, also contribute to this intestinal dysbiosis, which is a problem. So, you know, but and then sugar doesn't help uh, it primarily it's serving as fuel for the pathogenic or disease causing bacteria and other microorganisms like yeast and fungi and even uh, uh, viruses. Yeah. And it's you know, it's not going to be treated again in mainstream. And I interviewed a wonderful uh, nurse practitioner who's local here. And we uh, talked a lot about the options for people to help heal through that. Now, I, I, and we're not here to talk particularly about products, but one is I love your probiotics. And I will say this, and I may say it again. I have been in the industry uh, dealing with nutritional product supplements for four plus decades. It is Still, one of the most ethical, honest, and has integrity type of industries in the country, but that does not mean it's perfect. We have companies that really, no. uh, like most companies, only care they about lie. profits. They lie. <laughs> and they lie. And especially in the area of athletics and in sexual potency products and in, and in other products that are not even in those categories, they're just fudging on the fact that they're using the lowest freaking quality raw materials that possibly can be purchased and slapping a beautiful label on it. So the consumer has no idea. And yeah. we are such a uh, neurotic uh, group of people here that we, 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 we turn away about 80% of everything that's presented. But I can tell you from my absolute knowledge, and I have one of the best BS detectors in this industry, your stuff, it rocks. It is the best of the best. It will always pass the test from A to Z. So anything that has your name on it can be trusted. I'm, I put my 14 cents well, thanks, on that. Thanks for those kind words, Ed, and we'll be sending you your endorsement check shortly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm like you. I'm not being paid by anybody to say anything because yeah. I am way too outspoken and I've got to an age where I don't give a crap what someone else thinks. So, uh, well, our, our our uh, probiotics are good. They're some of the best in the industry. There's no question. We also have complete Storospore, which is a bacillus organism. It's a spore. So it's one that you could take when you, we can't say it because the FDA would slap us, but you could uh, probably throw us out of business, but it, you can take it when you're uh, have, have to use antibiotics for whatever reason. So it's not susceptible to antibiotics. And then another one that we don't make, but is could, is a really useful complement to it is Saccharomyces boulardii. Mm -hmm which really it's a yeast, but it, you know, it just helps complement that whole micro microflora in your gut. Yeah. My dad passed away from C. diff and you know, the docs oh. would not give him Saccharomyces boulardii, even though I was begging him, not that it would have helped. I think he was too far oh, gone, might have. but you never yeah, know. Yeah. And yet they wouldn't do it, but you know, the arrogance yeah. theory. Probably a fecal medical transplant would have, and you know, there's, an, you can figure out how to do that online yourself. You don't need to pay thousands of dollars and have a doctor's order for it. I know it. I, there's a great book by uh, a gastro doc. I think her name's uh, Chutkan, spelled the C. And she has the instructions in there yeah, on how yeah. to do that. I love it. And I have had several people who have done that. Uh, that's a lot better than the, what, 30,000 bucks in order to have your spouse's poop put in you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm a, and I'm, uh, have want to make one, uh, the next comment is about sleep and insomnia. I am a self-admitted insomniac since my daughter was born, which was 29 years ago. Uh, I kind of went into that mode of hyper alertness and blank, blank, blank. And so I still have that kind of issue and I've created my toolbox as far as the things I use, like during the mm -hmm. night, GABA is a lifesaver to me because it calms the brain back down. Uh, mm -hmm. And I have followed a lot of your advice, of course, like keeping the room totally dark and especially using blue blocker glasses. If it's anything past 5 p.m., I don't have a TV in my house. Uh, 
you know, if I use electronic appliances, I'm, I'm doing it with the right screens. Uh, I'm not as uh, obsessed a, about the EMFs, even though I'm completely on board with you. I, I just have, I can only do so much. So some of that still may be affecting me. I move everything five feet away from my head. You know, I'm taking the right supplements to help me. Do you have trouble sleeping? And what do you also would tell someone like me who has, who's doing pretty dang well, but I'm still not where I want to be? Well, there's a simple biohack you can use, which is CBD oil. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a wide variety. Just make sure it's a healthy organic. Uh, and you could even go up to maybe the normal dose is like 10 milligrams. You go up to maybe a 90 or 100 milligrams. Really? But, oh, yeah. Yeah. And, it, and it's it's phytocannabinoids. It's not like it's a, a drug. I mean, this is a, a plant product and you have cannabinoid receptors in your brain. So this is there's no high from CBD at all. It's not psychoactive. So that's one. And I would have to pretty strongly disagree with you and, to, and encourage you to really reconsider your positions on EMF because my next book that comes out next year is, is all about EMF. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm even thinking the subtitle is the EMF extinction event because mm -hmm. the exposure to these frequencies, and I mean, you're blocking the blue light, right? Well, guess what blue light is? Blue light is an EMF. So we're talking about frequencies that are actually lower than blue light, typically in the gigahertz range. And there is uh, then unequivocally interact with your biology that produce quite significant oxidative stress. In fact, some of the most significant oxidative stress produced in your body, if you're eating correctly, as I suspect you are, is a result of your EMF exposures. And it creates a, uh, essentially allows calcium channels to be activated, which causes nitric oxide and superoxide to combine to form peroxynitrite, a really crucial molecule. I don't know if you've heard of peroxynitrite before. Most people haven't. But it, it spins off carbonate free radicals, which are even da more dangerous than hydroxyl free radicals. And they, again, they damage your cell membranes, your mitochondria, or your proteins, your enzymes, your DNA. It's just it's bad and bad news bears big time. So uh, there is a device called the EMF kill switch dot com. EMF kill switch dot com. It's only it's about half the price that I paid for mine, which is from Gigahertz Solutions. And pretty easy to install. I don't even know that you need an electrician, although it'll probably be a good idea. But essentially, you can press a button and it kills all the power in your bedroom when you go to bed at night. And if you, for some reason, you need the power or, you know, emergency comes up, you got to see a light, then you just flip it back on. Uh, and that's what I do pretty much every night. Uh, now, that needs to be done in conjunction with shielding and measuring. Uh, but this, you know, we could talk for three hours about this. But, but I would just encourage you to reconsider it. And it's very, very clear. It's unequivocal, actually. There, there is just it's non-controversial that EMS will impair your sleep, specifically production of melatonin and impairment of really vital deep sleep uh, levels. So I would encourage you to reconsider that well, and see what happens. And then you can use, you know, objective biometrics like your aura ring. I don't know if you wear an aura, but it's pretty inexpensive to do. And it can you can actually measure how long you're sleeping and you know, can get your readiness scores. And it's a pretty nice device. And it's, it, the nice thing about it, you can put an airplane mode so it's not bombarding you with dangerous EMS like Bluetooth. Well, you know, I, I needed the push into the last bastion of what I've not involved yeah. myself because I completely agree with you. It's just, yeah. you know, I lead one of those lives like many people. You do all you can. And then there's a point yeah, where you I say, I, I can't just do more because I'm already doing this much. But no, but you can. And I'll tell you what, you were I was just like you. And I just thought well, if I'm doing everything, this that, uh, this shouldn't be an, an issue. I can't see it. I can't hear it. It's invisible. Mm -hmm. Everyone tells me that it's safe. The public health authorities, the <laughs> industry says it's safe, but it isn't. I mean, I finally had to get over the head like three years ago. And believe me, Ed, I'm telling you, they're just trust me on this one. It's a big, big deal. And it isn't that hard to remediate. I mean, it's, you know, it, it's a little bit of a challenge in your life, but not that much. And it's not that it's doable and it's uh, it's going to radically improve your ability to to reach one of your goals, which we both share, which is to live healthy beyond 100. And it, it is my contention. And see, I'm that my third book that's coming out. We've got uh, Fat for Fuel, Keto Fast. It's going to come out April 30th. EMF book that comes out next year. And then I'm writing four books about how to live after hundred uh, that are going to be my open magnus that, uh, you know, I literally have thousands of references on it already. So, you know, ultimately if you're not doing the first three things, you don't have your diet, right? If you're not engaging regularly in partial fasting, as I described in keto fast, if you're not avoiding the EMFs, it doesn't matter. You can't do these fancy stem cell injections or exosomes and think you're going to be healthy because you're not addressing the fundamental basics. 
If you don't know how to shoot a free throw or dribble a basketball, how the heck can you win an NBA championship? You know, mm. you got to get the basics right. The fundamentals. One of my favorite teams in sports was the, the Chicago Bulls in the 90s. And they won six world championships under the guidance of Phil Jackson, largely because Jackson drilled those guys into fundamentals. They got the fundamentals, fundamentals, fundamentals. And that's, that's what that's what builds success. And you it's similar in your health. You've got to address the fundamentals. Wow, that, that that is so important to hear. And you know what? I absolutely by tomorrow night, I'm going to hit the the flip switches on my breaker box because yeah, that's the first step. Okay, and then pick up a book. Until my my book is going to come out in a year. The best book out there now is the non tinfoil hat guide to EMF because it would take me three hours to tell you what to do. Mm-hmm. But this is written by Nick it's Nick Penault. He's a French Canadian, and really, a, it's the best book out there right now to tell you what to do and help you understand it. So you can get on Amazon. It's like 10, 15 bucks. It's, you know, totally worth it. Great advice. And, you know, I own a ton of equipment where I actually used to go out and test people's homes probably four or five years ago because it is amazing what's behind the bed and in the wall. And the fact that oh, yeah. I did not realize till I did testing that the the light, even though it's off next to your bed, is still putting EMFs out. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then you could have wiring errors, which about a third of the homes do. And then you need a pretty sophisticated uh, engineer or expert to analyze that because it's hard for a homeowner to do it by, you know, without the training. I will miss Alexa telling me goodnight, though. Because Alexa. No, you won't have your time. No (laughs) way. You'll realize, you know, you know, when I see, I'm sure you're the same way and you see someone eating a a French fries, a, a big plate of French fries, you know, or at a fast food. You just cringe. You know how they are destroying, literally destroying their body. There's probably no worse food on the planet mm-hmm. than a French fry uh, because of these industrially processed vegetable oils full of trans fat and cyclic aldehydes and just toxins. And there's no way you couldn't even comprehend eating that. And it's the same way. Once you understand the mechanism, which I did it, and I, I kind of gave you a brief overview of what the, the mechanism is. But once you understand it, you'll have the same viewpoint about EMF exposure. Mm-hmm. You'll avoid it just like those French fries because it's maybe even more dangerous. Wow. Well, I needed this kick in the butt, and I hope some of the listeners certainly do, too, because – you're right. It's invisible. We don't feel it. It's kind of like those old x-rays when when I was super young. Right. And you'd put your feet in the machines and be like, wow, look at that. Yeah, Daddy. you're talking about the, the foot. The I wrote this. Is, I wrote about this. A chapter in my book is the, uh-huh. the shoe fitting fluoroscopes yep. that came out in the 1920s and were around for three to four decades before they were finally banned. And this was this was they were even out after we knew x-rays were damaging. Yeah, so that's a good classic example <laughs> is just because it's out doesn't mean it's safe. And then, of course, a cigarette analogy and tobacco industry, how they they were able to get on for 50 years after the science was well established that smoking kills you prematurely. 50 years later, the the CEOs are testifying in Congress that it's completely safe. Well, we want to hear that. We want to be, you know, taken care of by someone who's hopefully smarter than us. But again, we're learning our lessons the hard way. And now people like you are helping others to know the options to not trust the uh, mainstream to protect us. Next question I'd like to ask is, you know, I don't care how healthy you eat and how many EMFs you stay away from. We are, you know, we're going to get sickly sometime with some kind of infection, whether it be a cold, flu, terrible allergy, whatever. I mean, we're not meant to not do that. I mean, all animals do it at a certain point. Now, I've got my little toolkit that if I'm feeling the fever, I'm feeling the sickness come on, that I grab one of which is olive leaf with a few others. But I'm really curious, really curious. What does Dr. McCullough go to if you're feeling attacked? I do something. I do two things. One is uh, we have a supplement called immune support, I think is the name of immune support, which does have olive leaf and about five other herbs that have been really well documented to be highly useful in the treatment of these types of infections. But I do that in conjunction with high dose liposomal vitamin C, probably anywhere from three to four or five grams. And a gram is one capsule uh, every hour until you're feeling better. I mean, you can go through a whole bottle in one day. I mean, people go into the physician's offices that are specialized in this and will get 25, 50 grams of an IV over a few hours. So it's perfectly safe to do. The vitamin C turns into a molecule called hydrogen peroxide, which is a very potent killer of these these uh, path, pathogenic infections. 
so it, it performs miracle. In fact, there's about 30,000 people a year who die from an illness called septic shock, which is a severe form of an infection. I mean, they're dead. This is in the U.S. alone, dead every year. And about 90 to 95 percent of them could be cured, cured. I mean, just Lazarus resurrected by, the, by just simply doing an IV vitamin C. Yet. And this is this this is this is published in in the conventional medical literature. I mean, there 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 are conventional physicians doing this, and but it's not accepted, and people don't and physicians don't do it. And as a result, you know, hundreds of people die every year because they're not implementing this. But you you don't have to go into the hospital and get an IV. You don't have to you, have to be, you don't have to be dying from septic shock. You can just take that that liposome will see because you can't take regular vitamin C because once you get up to twenty grams a day and some some as little as five or six grams, you're going to have very loose stools. Because uh, that's just the way the side effect of vitamin C. But if you have a liposomal, it'll absorb right into your bloodstream and you won't have any loose stool. So you can take as much as you want. I love that. And I do use your liposomal because, you know, liposomal yeah. means it's connected to a fat molecule and it, it really changes the game. And, you know, well, a quick story, you know. But but don't take it every day. Only take it when you need it for an infection. Mm-hmm. I only do one a day on, on maintenance, but. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Really? I would just. Yeah, I would okay. not do it. I would just only do it when you haven't needed an infection. I mean, you should have vitamin C every day, but try to get it from foods, and you mm-hmm. can get it from foods. It's hard. I, 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 I've got. Uh, I grow a lot of food in my uh, where I live, and one of the foods is a Barbados cherry tree, which is also called the acerola cherry. And every cherry, which is the size of about a gumball, not a big gumball, a small one, uh, has eighty milligrams of vitamin C, and that's like a few times the RDA. Wow. That's yeah, awesome. so I can get like 10 grams of vitamin C a day just from eating my cherries, mm. 10 grams. And interestingly, when it's in the form of a food, you don't mm. get loose stools. Ah, really? Yeah. Well, it's, I mean, I am, we're on board together with the food issue. I certainly know from my experience from seeing way too many people who did everything, you know, they ate all the bad foods they wanted, smoked cigarettes and hoped that supplements would keep them alive. And they all kind of uh, died, you know, pretty early. Uh, I mean, I am a supplement guy now. We'll say I take a lot of things, but uh, I have I've gotten a whole food is the way to go and, and blank, blank, blank. But one comment on the septic shock thing, because we know that that actually can happen to people who are relatively very healthy, it can just kind of overburden the whole body. I sent that protocol with the, I think it's B1 and the steroid and the yeah, but, right. yeah, and vitamin right. C. I sent it to one of our functional, um, well, they're not, they're kind of functional medicine, very open-minded clinic here across town. And I said, could you do this for me if this ever happens to me? Because in our town, we don't have anybody who's really embracing it. And it was like, no, and these people are open-minded. I don't know what, it's, what's that's just shocking. That's shocking. Yes, because it's, um, but it is, and it, and it's, it's costing this country, you know, thousands of people dying, maybe 10,000. I don't know. No, it is it's tens of thousands, 30,000 people in the U.S. every year alone. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Well, so the only alternative then is if you're self, self-helping yourself, then you would do the best you can, which is the liposomal. You do it quite often. Yeah, and, and a bottle of liposomal C isn't terribly expensive. It's a lot less expensive and inconvenient than going into a doctor for an IV. Yeah. Well, you know, here's another point about you. I mean, how many people who own a company of, of your level who actually produces products would tell a person on a podcast that they don't need to take their product? That just rings of true ethics. So thank you for that. Uh, that's well, also- Michael, listen, I got all the money I need. I really, yeah. I mean, I would like something for to do some research, but, uh, you know, the issue is helping people. It's not mm-hmm. trying to fool them or deceive them is to give them assistance. And, you know, you, and I, I think there is, you know, I could be wrong on this, not about not helping people, but about vitamin C. And I just don't think you need, uh, Graham is a lot of vitamin C. And some people may be giving me grief for it, but I, mean, I think of, a hundred or two hundred milligrams spread evenly throughout the day is a wiser choice. And and when you need it, take the big bullets. You know, mm-hmm. heavy armor. I mean, I, I I just had had a was it bulletproof conference, the best event of my life ever. And it was only sleeping four hours a night because I was so excited I couldn't go to sleep and I caught a little infection. So I did this protocol I just described to you. And I took went through a bottle of vitamin C in two days. Uh, that's that's exciting to know that we have these options. And um, again, regular vitamin C causes me terrible grief with loose stools. Yours has never ever done that. So lovely for liposomal. Uh, last question I want to ask you, and I have no idea what you think about this, but I watching hundred hundred thousand people over my forty years 
following their health. People tend to always uh, share their innermost things with me for some strange reason, I, I guess just because I'm a good listener. And, you know, I've, it seems to me sometimes that there is an inter- in, internal clock that we kind of are born with that I'm going to live to be 82 years old. And there's not a lot I can do to get past it. There's certainly plenty to do to get less of it. Uh, do you find feel that that's accurate or is it something that I'm off base with? No, no. In fact, actually, Travis Christopherson, who you referenced earlier, wrote the book, The, the Metabolic Theory of Cancer. Uh, no, Tripping Over the Truth, sorry. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it clued me in on this. And uh, there's a researcher called Steve Horvath, who is credited with uh, identifying the Horvath clock, which essentially is this, these sections of DNA strands that get, meth- get methylated. And it's also called the epigenetic clock. And it may be one of the most accurate assessments to see how old you are. So this epigenetic clock, uh, you, as you mentioned, you can accelerate it rapidly through oxidative stressors primarily, but also inflammation and inv- infections. Uh, and uh, that you can have more methylation. And the more, more methylation you have, the, the, the closer you are to death. So interesting, a lot of the research now that, that I talked to kind of implied or referenced earlier, the books I'm, I'm writing in the next few years are addressing this and how to reverse this at a molecular biological level, because they've done some very intriguing studies that have published recently in animals actually reversing some of this. And there's a guy who got the uh, uh, his name is Professor Yamanaka he's from Japan, obviously, and he got the uh, Nobel Prize in 2012 for these uh, these gene sets that can actually reset this clock that you're referencing, the reset stem cell clock. So there are some very, very intriguing research going on and the potential to radically extend the human lifespan is, I think, just around the corner. Uh, There's a good chance for it. Well, that's so hopefully people of our age will hopefully, if we take good care of ourselves, be able to access that. Yeah, this is why you got to do be metabolically flexible, fat for fuel, Mm -hmm. engage in regular uh, periods where you're not eating with keto fast, EMF restriction, Nick's book now, my book next year, and then the strategies that will take us to the next level. But you got to do the basics first. Well, and I, I, I wrote and I do write a lot about what I call the core four, which I think everybody needs a certain nutritional basic and basics of omega-3, vitamin D and, you know, uh, uh, green drink. Uh, those are part of the core four. And I talk about it constantly. But the last single question, I know it wasn't even on my list. There's a thing called phase angle, and we do a lot of testing with people with phase angle. And phase angle is a really, I think, a pretty good determinant of maybe health robustness and vitality from a cellular level. Don't yeah, you? what's your what, what, yeah, what's your number? Uh, I'm a the worst hypochondriac on earth, so I don't check myself because I'm too I never can be perfect. And I know slap me and you can, but I just can't. So what's yours? Well, it's a lot lower than I'd like it to be, but you know, I'm, I'm, I was in, intrigued with the phase angle as a measurement, but, and I think there's some interesting correlations, but I've, I've mine is about, it ranges between low sixes and mm-hmm. low sevens. Okay. So, but I'd like it to, but my personal trainer who I believe I'm, I mean, he's 30 years, no, 30, 20 years younger than I am, uh, has a phase angle of like 12.1, which is like, wow. but he's a real muscular built guy. And I don't think he's that much healthier than I am. In fact, in many ways, I think I'm healthier than he is. Uh, so I'm, I'm a bit skeptical about the accuracy and the prediction, predictive, predictive, predictive accuracy of that as a measurement tool. But well, I mean, there's some broad, certainly there's no question of the low end. If you're below four and if you're below three, five, you're going to be dead really soon. Well, I mean, it's funny that you said exactly what you said, because this was my question of the day on the face angle is we do people who are very muscular, probably on steroids. I don't know. They don't tell me. And they're running eight to 10 to 11 on numbers. And I know they're not healthier than I am. And and so I'm exactly with you. What I love it for, though, is if I, if we put somebody on a certain change of eating yeah. and supplements, we can and monitor see. and see if it's going down. We're doing something wrong. If it's going up. Well, we're you know, we're winning the race here. But I'm like you. I'm, it's not a black and white issue. And, and because I've seen some of these anomalies come through, I'm, I'm kind of uh, taking it with a grain of salt. But yeah, you got you got the RJL that you're using. Uh, I have the Sika which is out of Germany, and we do it for uh, uh, also weight loss uh, management. Yeah, because uh, the, the L stands for Lipke, and he's the guy that actually mm-hmm. 
d- figured this out. I mean, he he d- developed this and designed the whole program for it. So the other companies are just copying him. But he did the research. I think it was military contracted him to do it. Hmm. And he's out of Michigan. Okay. Uh, but the RJL is kind of like the standard, the gold standard instrument. Well, I'm going to check into that. And I tell you, I cannot thank you enough for not only being my guest on the Holistic Navigator, but I want to thank you from the standpoint of this country and the bravery that you have done to stand up to dogma. And th- and I know you have not spoke about it, but I know that you have been threatened on many levels. I know there's been intimidation because it just happens when you when you bunk the system like you are. And I want you to live up to another 40 years because we all need your wisdom, your clarity, your advice, because you are one of the only people living who's brave enough and ethical to stand up and say what needs well, to be said. Thank you for those kind words, but I'm clearly not one of the only people. There's a lot of good people out there, people who have sacrificed a lot more than I have. No, I'm but the tell- difference is they don't, they don't have the platform. You have the platform. Yes, you're right. There are plenty of others, but they don't have the platform and power and momentum yeah. that you do. So you're the one who can change it. So anything I can yeah. ever do to help you, to help everyone else, I'm always here for you, Dr. Mercola. Well, I appreciate that, Ed, and thank you for the opportunity to engage in a dialogue and help people share the truth about strategies that can get people healthy. And remember, Keto Fast comes out April 30th, so it's a good book, and it's part of the trio you're going to need. If you want. If you don't want to live beyond 100 or, or not be frail, then forget about it. You don't need it. But if you do, it's a good, good idea. Keto Fast, uh, we will be speaking of it often, and I, it's just been an astounding uh, hour, and thank you, Dr. Mercola. Oh, you're most welcome. Appreciate the opportunity. Well, all right, everyone, that's going to wrap up this week's episode. Thank you so much for listening, and we hope that you learned some valuable things to better your health. Have a blessed week, and we'll see you next time.